Hey there, money warriors. Welcome back to Money 911, the podcast that's like a financial emergency hotline, ready to answer your burning questions and inspire. Well, you just heard that beautiful intro, and I just, I just really want to jump right in, Rosalind. You are a force of nature when it comes to education, entrepreneurship, and public speaking. So, go ahead and just share the secret. What's your secret sauce? Right, the journey it's made you such a powerhouse inside of conversations. Well, the one thing that makes me a powerhouse is I never quit. I never get up. Whatever's thrown at me, you just keep trucking along because that's part of my name. There's always, you know, I said I'm a best-selling author. I am a best-selling author, and that I will be. I'm a betting artist. I'll be a betting artist, and that I will be. And you just, you just, you just say it, you claim it, and you make it happen. And that's that's what I believe. That's what I'm all about. I'm with you right there. It really is. You know, when you get knocked down, you just keep getting up, and it just makes you stronger. It's 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 really true. It does work like that. And, you know, in your TED Talk, you have a TED Talk called Breaking Cultural Barriers, right? No, just one of of them. And and, um, maybe just give us a few knowledge bombs on how folks break free from the chains of the culture and, and get into, you know, manifesting their financial dreams. Well, I think, you know, culture puts up certain barriers for us. We have different skin, we have different hair, we have different backgrounds, we have different cultures, and it can be a, a well, kung fu. <laughs> right. Or I look at people who have different accents and I say, wow, that's amazing. Tell me where you're from. Because you can learn so much without traveling by opening your minds up to to people's stories and their histories and what they're really all about. And, and breaking cultural barriers was about three people throughout history, a lady who was in the world when the right to vote was coming about. And she was out there and she was making it happen. There was another person who was an Olympic performer when blacks weren't necessarily right and was one of the rowers who got up and stood in the way. And there was Rosa Parks. And and all of them didn't wake up one day and say, I'm going to be a change maker. Right. They they just went out and, and lived their life. And if we if we look life at at doors that it can open and opportunities that are with us, we can we can make all sorts of different realities happen and come from us. And it's that that open mindset that says, you know, just ask, I was on the phone for someone saying, can I ask you a favor? And he said, sure, what is it? I said, I got this book launch and I was wondering, you know, not just one, can you just get a few? And he said, sure. And I'm like, I'm going for this number. Can you help me? Can, can you commit to this number? And you you just ask. And because I said, it's going to make it happen. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> it's going to make it happen. Right. Ask and you'll receive. It really, it does work. For sure. And not that you always get the, the answer, but it does not change immediately. the energy, yeah, you got, right? You got to wait. You got to wait. It breaks the barriers. And, you know, I think we all got to get out of looking on the outside and going to the inside because it's people's hearts that really matter, not what's what all the different things look like. You know, it's it's also temporary. It's gone in an instant, right? I mean, life, you just look at what, what had happened all those years, right? So, in the moment, staying present and staying in the heart and talking to people's hearts, not their, all the different barriers. That's, that's, I like that. So you are, you've coached a lot of TEDx speakers to shine on stage, right? And that's kind of like one of your, your brilliances. And what would you say the golden ticket unlocking the stories? Because, you know, a lot of people can tell 
boring stories, right? So how how do you empower people to get up there and you know consolidate everything into a TEDx story? Make well, it- you, you got to be your authentic, true self. Yeah, you can't be just like me. You got to have your own voice. But in that voice, we can go on and on and on and on and on, or we can get to the point. I mean, there was a lady named Eliana Jalad, and I remember the first time we had a conversation. I can point the couch I was at at the living room, and I can show you how the clock went round and round and round. And how she told me from here to there, and we had to pull it out of there. Mm-hmm. We had to consolidate it. We had to make it into to 18 bright minutes or five minutes. And then when she got to the stage, she had to expand it. But it's it's the pulling and the pulling in. What's really most important? Mm-hmm. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. Okay, let me see. If I got this right, what you said is bop, but it up, but it up. Yeah, okay. Let's let's fine tune it on that. Um I've been teaching public speaking for 20 plus years and I'd sit down with students and I'd say, what you're trying to say is this. And how do you do that? Oh, a little experience. I've been doing this a little bit of time, but you're so good. Well, you're doing this a little bit of time. You need to have a skill too. It's, we all have our, our traits of, of, of warrior and banner of what we can do. And, and it's how you put those to practice. And, and that's what I found. I had a lady who just recently came up, who was on the platform last night and was saying, I came to Rosalind. It was amazing what she could do. And she came and said, I get scared every time I get up and give my speech. I just I just forget what it is I'm going to go ahead and say. I said, we're going to do an exercise here. Why don't you sit up straight and tall? Take a deep breath in and exhale. Another deep breath in and exhale. And exhale. Now, I want you to see yourself on that platform. What are you wearing? What's the expression on your face? When you feel centered in your heart, you're giving that speech. What is the reaction that you see? What is the reaction that you intend? What's the reaction that you have? Now, hold on to that. Clearly hold on to that. And sit with it. And when I count to three, we're going to open your eyes. And what's amazing is when she went on that platform, she wasn't just a panel speaker. She was the speaker. And she, when she got up, it was flawless. People were coming up and saying, and she couldn't stop telling me. And she goes, oh, my God, I work with Rosalind. And Rosalind gave me this small piece of advice. And I said, folks, it's all about the power of visualization. Visualization. Mm. It's it's really a, a mind-boggling thing that um, we've got to put out there to, to, to make it happen. And uh, that's what's really one of the key, key instruments. Yeah, it really is key. And, you know, I've been speaking for three decades and I'm going to an event in Dallas, Texas. I'm going to be speaking, you know, 100 or 200 people there. And I and I haven't analyzed it and I'm not a teacher in speaking. So, you know, like you are. But I was thinking only because of that experience that I've done it so much that it's intuitive and you and but the but the visualization, like you said, like I already see, you know, like knocking it out of the park. But that confidence for me has just been repetition. And I know if I would have had a coach early in life that I would have been able to, you know, cut to the chase and and be at that. Just like you said, you know, standing and and standing in your power and envisioning what you want and all of that, that can make it happen faster, right? Right. So much faster. You, you know, a lot of people that are listening I are feeling like they're in a financial ban- battle. And this is money 911. So we, I talk about health, wealth, and peace of mind. But right now, there's such a change that's happening on this planet with the health and the wealth. And they're trying to globalize it all, right? So we're trying to, you know, swim through and stay in the calm seas as everything is turbulent. What it, what's your ultimate, you know, I hate battle because I'm not into war, but what is your battle plan and, and, and making, you know, the financial goals that people want to make and, and feel like they're not fighting an uphill battle? Well, I think it's important that people set their goals to what's important to them. What are the values that they strive for? Maybe it's making all the money is in the world, or maybe it's just being calm with themselves and who they are because people come in different stripes in different ways in different manners. And to me, the most important thing is to love what you do. Right. right. You got to love what you do because when you love what you do, the rest will go ahead and follow. And there also has to be that, that self-care. 
you know, it was a, it was a big day yesterday, really big day. I was doing a, a book launch and I woke up at two 30 in the morning and I said, it's time to clean the floors. And, you know, cleaning the floors does something for me. Next day I, woke, I woke up, I said, it's time to paint a picture. And you go, but you got a book launch. You got people called. No, I have to paint the picture. And it was, it's calming, making things in order. It's calming, moving that thing on a piece of paper so that when I got up from the next nap, I was, I was ready. I was there and, right. and I could go ahead and do it. And, you know, I belong to different groups and they, they help me with the mind and the body and the soul. And they say, there's, there's a personal life, there's a professional life and there's a financial life. And I'm like, okay, we went swimming yesterday. Yep. Check that box off. We've painted yesterday. Yep. Check that box off. And I walked it all. Yep. Check that box off professionally. I called a zillion people, called a zillion more. Yep. Check that box off. And the financially, you know, it's, we're, we're making this happen. This is, this is going to take me to the next level. So I'm planting seeds to, to get to the next one. And another helpful tip is full of tips is another group I belong to said, um, you got to evaluate every day with the wins and the losses. What did you win? What were you happy about? Why did, why did it make that happy? And what did you, what did you lose and how can you go ahead and, and do better? And we have to have partners of accountabilities. And so, you know, win, lose or draws, I'm on that, that call four out of five days of the week. I'm on that other call, you know, you make it, you make it early or late. I, I got there in the time that was just right for me. And these are the things that, that keep us solid and grounded. And when you have these markers, you know, there's another group I was in and they said, what's your financial goal for the weekend? And, oh my God, it was like, I looked at my books and I looked at the bills and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> right. right. And they said, well, what's your goal? And I just pulled a number out of the sky. And and that night, oh my God, there was a message on the phone and, and there was money coming in. And this other person said, Rosalind, there's money in your house. There's money in your house. And I went and, and I did, I found it in my house. And so like, I, I tripled the amount of money I thought I was going to have. And I was like, this is, this is amazing. Right. And, and, and like, if we do that, every day and we, we keep going. And that's why we have these accountability people who come back and did you make it? Did you make, what's the goal? What's the goal? How far are you going to, what, what are you going to do better this week? Right. You got it. You got to state it and put your feet in the groundwork and, and get out there and make it happen. Exactly. And, and the accountability, you know, where we can help each other and then you learn how to be accountable inside yourself too, you know, it, but that's only comes from when you know your goals and what's important to you. Sometimes people have it all mixed up where they have the wrong thing is important and then they're never, never satisfied if they make millions of dollars or whatever. That's, that's to why you got to be happy where you're at right here and now with what you have. It's, it's exactly. not when I get to, when I got to have and all these toys because they don't, they don't bring it. You got to. Right. Love that. that. Yeah. You never, and there's never, you know, you never get there, you know, like, oh, I had the number one book. Okay. Or I had the number one song. Okay. And then I got to that level and it was like, okay, but then I felt like, you know, okay, I've, you know, had some number one songs and a number one, but it's not about, I didn't want it about, oh, me, me, me. It was like, I, I'm the kind of, I want to see, well, how can I use all that to help other people? And that's what gets me excited because, right, it goes around, comes around. So it, you, you have a book, right, Coming Around the Curve. Is that is that the name? No, that that's a that's a is talk. That old? That's, a talk that, that's a talk coming around the curve on my battle with scoliosis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good talk. Scoliosis, really? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. What was that like? Imagine take your hands and put it around your waist and squeeze as tight as you get until it hurts. And yeah. imagine you had to walk around like this, and when you finally got to do that, they said, "Not enough. Sorry, you failed." Uh oh. We're put you in the hospital, and we're going to operate on your back. Ooh. And so you entered high school like a football player, a linebacker for the main team. And they all looked at you as strange. I knew this lady, but I don't know who she is. I don't know who she is. <laughs> and so you kind of faced a little bit of isolation. Mm -hmm. Or maybe right. you went inside and that's where my writing came. Right. But um, you, you face a little bit of being put on the outside. And it gave me an empathy of having empathy for other people in other places and just trying to see their perspective of where they're about and what's going on. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was, it was a horrifying experience, but it, it taught me a great lesson. It's to feel for those who don't have, and everybody, regardless of whether they're physically has something that's not quite there. 
and I won't call it what it is. I'll just say something that's not quite right. Mm-hmm. So if we can all have empathy for other people for what's not quite right, then we can make it a better place. Exactly. I mean, this is schoolroom earth and we're all here. So everybody's got their lesson and have a little more compassion for the other guy. You don't, you never know what people are going through. I mean, you can see someone smiling, but you know, it's, it's intense. And I talked to hundreds of people, you know, where, with their healthy money conversations. It's shocking to me, you know, how, how, what everybody's going through. It's pretty intense. Everybody I'm speaking to is like, it's going so fast and it's so crazy. And some of the stories are just makes me grateful, right? Just saying grateful for what you have and, and being compassionate to others. So tell me and tell everybody you have a book. You're doing a book launch right now. I just, you know, you were right in the middle of it before you jumped on here. So tell everybody about your book and where to get it and what the name yeah. is and everything. The book is called The Captivating Speakers. It's 25 tips on nothing other than public speaking. And what some of the people were saying that I really like is this is a book that's not like any others. Why? There's lots of stuff that most other people don't include in their book. From the beginning of before you get out there, what do you need to do? How do you go ahead and set up to when you're finished and you're giving the speech, what do you take home? How do you network? How do you take it and make it? And how do you break it and cut it up and chop sueys? And and the other part said, it's you, Rosalind. It's not just what you find in a textbook. It's you on the TED when things don't go wrong. How do you get yourself back up and get yourself going? It's really a workbook. So maybe there's a, an author out there who doesn't know how to get up and speak on a stage, or maybe there's a corporate executive who wants an extra little bit of coaching. This is a guidebook that you can take with you that whenever you get up and give a speech, okay, I'm going to the speech. What do I need to make sure? Oh, I need to do a blah, 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 blah. I need to blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm there. Now I need to bring this. This says I need to, okay, I've got that. I got that. Okay, it's over. What do I do? And everything from bringing an extra set of instructions for the person who introduces you to that lovely thank you note that you need to leave in behind. And when you go to a networking meeting, how do you, hi, my name is Rosalind. What's your name? Can I have one of your business cards? Oh, we met the other night. Can, you, can we all do business? It's, 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 it's like I said, um, right. it's, it's the power of listening. It's like I, I went to a, a networking group the other day and I just listened. And the guy was my best friend. And so when he showed up on the call yesterday, I was like, yeah. Or the yeah. young lady I met the day before at the movie thing. She said, I just met you at the movies. Oh, yeah, that's right. We had a lovely conversation. And they always see just a piece of you. They don't get to see the whole thing. So keep some surprises. Right, right. Well, that's not, what's the name of the book? It's called A Captivating Speaker, 25 Tips on Public Speaking. Okay. It's available on Amazon. And you want to go to Amazon. You want to put that in. You'll see all my lovely books. But it's the most recent one. And hey, if you're one of the first ones who does a review, I might have a special prize for you. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. And so yeah. what? Give me a, give me a few of those tips. I like I would just bragged about how I've been speaking so long, but you know, hey, I well, need a tip. I'm going to go speak. What should I? What do I need to know? The number one thing you need to know is the importance about it. About what? Pause. Oh, pause. Okay. The yeah. Hold their attention in, and you make them think. Hmm. The art. The art. Then uh, there is the thing about, you know, volume. If we're always going ahead and screaming at this volume, then they can never hear what we're saying. And so at some points we want to lower our voice and bring them into us closer. Yeah. All right. All right. Bury that. Now you've got an extra set of your instructions, your your introduction, because they've always lost it. Mm. You, You got those extra set of your introduction, right? And you've got a backup plan in case your speech fails, what you're going to do when the PowerPoint doesn't work. (laughs) <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Hey, that's five. You got five there right go. there. Okay. 20 more to go. 20 more to go. Very. Yeah, that's very cool. Did you learn? To, what was the favorite one that you didn't already know? Um, it's, I know, I know those, but it was a reminder, the pause. And that's a thing of that. I, it's just a habit of just speaking. It is said, listen, you know, like listen to people when they're talking and it's like pause before you speak instead of, bleh, you know, and it's the same thing for speaking one on one to the audience. So, so I, I'm a singer too. So I, your pause and then the volume, paying right. attention to that. And you also did the thing, um, I can't remember his name, but he's, you know, a f- famous speaker guy where he has you stand up and you're in your stature and, and you're watching the sound go out, 
right? Right, 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 right. You know, that, yep, that yep, yep. Room, that guy. Right. So that because speaking is like singing, and it, and it's the same, and it's the same kind of thing, even though, and even it doesn't matter what kind of room it is, but you're still going to use those techniques. So you're so, still going to use those techniques. How big, small you know, 25,000 or whatever, they're just amplified or reduced. Right, right. And so, you know, when, when, you know, you're, you're like, you're apparently a humanitarian powerhouse too, right? You're very just a little caring. bit, just a little just here, a little there. What can I say? You kind of care a little bit, you know, and I, I have that same tendency. Well, you know, I just want to, you know, only have so much time and I want to use it to change the world. So we have the, the thing like, I want to, you know, bring peace on earth. And, and then, you know, you have your personal development and financial development. So how do you mix all of those together? So they're you go crazy. Mm -hmm. You go crazy. Do I go crazy? I said you go crazy. Oh, you go crazy. That's it. That's the answer. Well, no, you, you got to have you got to have boundaries. It's it's like. You know, to know me is to love me, to know that I am A1 focused. So if I'm working on this, you best not get in the way because that's what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. But when your time comes, I'll put you in there and I'll be there mm -hmm. and to be present. Um, they they call it time blocks or, you know, on this day, I do Toastmasters. On this day, I do Rosalind's book. On this day, I do the marketing for the TV station. On this day, I do the spirituality. On this day, I work for the ambassadors and on on this day, I'm out with the TV station. On that day, I'm with the magazine. And you get the right. drill? Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know, this has been a fun conversation. And again, tell everybody the name of your book and where they're going to get it, right? The name of my book is called Captivating Speaker, 25 Tips on Public Speaking. The name is Rosalind, just like the name down in the, in the corner here. R O S A L Y N. Last name is Khan, K A H N. If you go to Amazon, you'll see it. If you go to LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, you name it, she's there, all those places. Okay. And even a webpage with that name. All right. Hey, I, I spent a few years at, um, in the NS National Speakers Association, and, and I was going to a lot of those different little classes. And, and so, Maybe you could give a little cherry on the top. So somebody's standing up there, and the first thing they're going to say, what comes out of their mouth, what what, what kind of coaching will you tell someone <clears throat> how they're going to start their talk? What, what would you well, coach you want You want to grab someone's attention, but you don't want to be offensive. Mm -hmm. You need to read the room and know what's what's right for them. You know, if you tell a joke about a little old granny old lady and so on and so forth, and they're all 15 year olds, they're not going to listen to you. <laughs> if you tell somebody about a story in the South and you're on the West Coast, they're going to laugh at you. If you're in a group of uh, football players and you talk about a ballerina, that's going to be probably a problem there. Now, if we're talking to the football players and we ta start talking about the U.S. Army, there's something that will work mm. because it's teamwork. It's that same mentality. It's that same manpower. But we could say, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to shock you out of your shoes. But did you know that football players and ballerinas have something that's similar? Don't laugh at me. Don't start throwing tomatoes. <laughs> it's the mindset. It's the determination. And whether you're taking that pass and you're doing that throw, it's just like the ballerina is, you know, doing that. And it's got the same similarities as a person in the military. It's discipline. Wipe it, stripe it. It's all the same. How do we take that mindset and open it up to possibilities yeah open it up to possibilities beautiful okay well there you go anything else you want to cherry on top or you well i think you know my mission in life is to tell stories that leave a legacy so if you're looking for someone who has a story but they don't know how to put it together i'm your go-to coach who helps you formulate those 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 messages like i said and streamline to what you really want to get out of there you can follow me on on LinkedIn, you can see all the professional things that I do out there. And it's it's just a, a, a blessing and beyond. I'm a, I'm a face of Woha. I'm a woman of heart. I'm an ambassador of peace. Um, a few other titles and so on and so forth. But you can follow me on Rosalind Khan and reach out to me. And maybe there's a free gift that could be coming your way. All you right. never know what that might include. Just right. reach out to me, send me a message, and I'll get back to you. And to say that you saw me on Chris Miller's show. And then we'll get right back at you. 
Sounds good, Rosalind. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And that's a wrap, folks. Rosalind Khan, thank you for the electric jolt of inspiration and empowerment. And to all of our listeners, remember, the odds may be stacked against you, but with the right mindset and strategies, you can flip the script and become the hero of your financial story. If you've loved today's episode, and how could you not? Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review Money 911 on your favorite podcast platform. We'll be back soon with more financial superpowers to help you crush your money goals. Until next time, stay financially invincible. There's so much to learn about healthy money. I hope today's discussion brings you one step closer to securing and protecting your future. So you can get started on the right foot, go to meetwithchrismeller.com and schedule your free financial fitness strategy session. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to Money 911 so you don't miss our next episode, which includes health, wealth, and peace of mind.